How y'all doing tonight? Tonight we going to cook some fresh, not really fresh, it's been previously frozen, tuna. My neighbor brought them back from his fishing trip. They went a little bit further out than we did. So what we gonna do, we gonna cook some of his tuna. He brought us over a piece I let fall out earlier. Oh man, it's gonna be good. I'm gonna cook it on the grill, put it on that salt. First we're gonna marinate it just a little bit. It's gonna be real good, y'all. Great recipe. That's what we're gonna do for this recipe. I'm gonna cut up and get us some ginger ready. Let me show you how I'm gonna do that. First what I'm gonna do, we'll cut this little, little leg off right there. I'm gonna just take a sharp knife with this little consumer titanium. We're just gonna shave that skin off there. So we don't need that. Remember, this thing does it very easily. I just gotta get down this crevice of that. Oh, that ginger smells wonderful. And I'll tell you what you can do. If you got something left, I plant this stuff in my garden. It comes up real pretty. And it'll make a, I think sometimes it'll make a little flower. But that's another video. Let's just get this get that cleaned up. Nice and cleaned up there. That eye off, see? That's where it start growing with that eye. Now off there, okay. You want you one of these, a great tool. It's by Microplane. This is a fine grater. You see, it's got this attachment on here that catches what you grate. It's a nice big one here. Microplane, like I said. Fine grater. Let me show you. What you're going to do is you're going to shred this. Let's hear ginger. And look how quickly this is this is working here. And I love this thing because it's it's large, it's easy to hold on to, and it's got this little catch in the back, so it catches everything you grade. You ain't got to worry about making a big mess and all that kind of stuff. I actually got one of these in three different sizes. I got this fine, I got a coarse, and then I got one that has little slits like for grading chocolate or something like that. Anyway, but you see how it does? It's catching it back there. Add this ginger measuring cup here smells wonderful I mean fresh ginger you can't beat that oh yeah I'm gonna add a little bit of dark soy sauce not gonna add much because I'm gonna be cooking this on the salt this is that um, you know normally you add about a half a cup I'm add about a quarter cup of that that dark soy yeah I'm gonna get some um, some rice wine vinegar I'm gonna add about a half a cup of it. This is gonna give it some good flavor too. Half a cup or so of that. Add some honey. I'm trying to use all this honey out of this bear here so I can put my good honey in here. This is just old store bought here. So anyway, there's probably a tablespoon or so left in that bear. Use that. Some green onions here. I'll bust these up. Put a few green onions in here. I don't even feel like getting the chef's knife. I can do it with this little pair of knife here. And these green onions will add some flavor. I'll just break this little batch of them up here. Add right them to the party here. Oh yeah. Green onions mean flavor. A lot of green onions and alligator sausage last night. Get a couple of big toes of garlic here. I had, I don't know how that's going to work, I had a garlic press, I would use that, but I can't find it, that's one of the least used tools in my kitchen is a garlic press, I'm just going to shave some of it off here with this, this microplane, this thing's working so good for me, we'll just use it, grind that garlic, oh it's that strong, got a garlic slurry here, man that, that'll put some punch in you. And burn your skin, that stuff's so strong. Yes, sir. Whoo! What's that in there? Use some of this sunball leek. Remember this, uh, good, it's like Chinese, whatever, red pepper, kind of paste stuff, relish, I guess you would say. Hope we get the two spoons of that stuff. That stuff adds some good heat. Everything like that, and we'll stir this up. That's a marinade right there, folks. Nice and marinade. I got my beautiful tuna steaks here in this Ziploc bag. 
I hadn't thawed out from earlier. I believe he said this is yellowtail. I'm not 100% sure. Haven't done a lot of tuna fishing in my day down here because you got to go really far out. I think they went out about 90 miles or so. So let's pour that off in there. The marinade. We'll kind of just squeeze all the air out of it. And we don't really need that much of the bag. So I'm going to fold it over like that. Push all the air out that I can. I just didn't have a, another bag that would fit any better than this. See that? When you get all that married up with that juice, all that good stuff there. Oh, yeah. Put that over. Whatever. Put this back in the refrigerator. Let this marinate for about an hour or so. I'm going to go ahead, you know, do the drill with the salt. Get the oven started at 250, start heating my salt, all that kind of stuff. We're waiting on this, y'all. Well, waiting on salt to heat up and everything. I'm going to go ahead and open up what side we're going to have tonight. This is Allen's Popeye spinach. Stuff goes great with tuna. They like this here tuna. I love their products, especially this canned spinach. Well, I mean, I love a lot of them, the trappy stuff and everything. But especially this canned spinach with your tuna. It's really good stuff. So we'll put that in the pot and get that started here in a second. I believe this tuna has marinated long enough. So what we'll do, I've got this cookie drying rack here. Put over the sink. And this, in my opinion, is the easiest way to do this. Take the tuna, just set it right there. Like I said, with this salt, you know, you want stuff to be kind of dry before you put it on there. So we're gonna set these here and just let them kind of drip dry, dry out here in the air. All right, so I stair stepped the salt all the way up to 550 in the oven. We start out at 230, let it hit that temperature. So let it sit for a few minutes, for about 10 minutes at that temperature. You know, then we stepped it up to about 250, 275, all that kind of stuff. And we're up to 550, we're about to take it out. We're gonna set it up here on this burner. All right, I'm gonna get my heat gloves on here. These grill aid gloves, these are great for doing stuff like this. Real heat aids. Let's see what we got here. That's salt, Ooh, that's a hot oven. Pull that salt out. Set up top here. There in the middle. Then we're gonna turn the burner on. Turn it on about medium there. See, I don't know if you can see all that. Basically what we're doing, we're going to heat it up even more. You get these gloves off to work this camera. We'll heat that block up even more. Right there. We'll get it smoking hot before we put this fish on. Oh, it's yellow fin tuna, not yellow tail. That's what he told me. And now remember, before we put this, this salt up here on this burner, we had it stepped up to 550 degrees there in the oven. You know, we worked it up to that. So we didn't just set it right there on that burner. It got too hot too quick. Salt's building that burner for a minute or two. Let me get you adjusted there. I'm going to add a little bit of peanut oil right there to that salt. That way, get a nice little slippery surface here. Tuna down. It's gonna be real good here. Just gonna add that. As soon as I see the first little whiff of smoke, I'll know that we're ready to go ahead and put a piece of tuna down. It should be about hot enough. I'm not waiting for it to smoke. I'm just seeing this really bubbling and sizzling there on top. I don't want to burn anything. So what I'm gonna do is take a piece of the tuna, lay it right here over where that burner is. That's beautiful. That's that stuff is simmering. Yeah, beat that. I'm gonna let that go just a couple minutes. Right, it's only been a minute or two, but I can see that tuna getting cooked up the sides there. Go ahead and flip them over. Look at that beautiful piece of fish. Look at that, it's gorgeous. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take this piece of tuna off. It's done cooked enough. Push it off the front there. We're right there on the cutting board. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And so stuff won't burn or anything too much. Go ahead and just wipe it in this oil or the juice off the block there. I got my tuna over here on the board. Let's go grab your really sharp knife. I just like to go ahead and cut mine up. I'm a sashimi like style. Look at that. Tuna's just wanting to flake apart. 
beautiful fish. A fresh wild caught yellow tail, I mean yellow fin. That is gorgeous. That is really gorgeous piece of fish. You can't beat that right there. Oh yeah, I'm gonna play some right up. I like to serve mine up like this with a little bit of sriracha on the side. You know, that way you can take your tuna and get a little bit of heat if you want. There. Oh yeah, that's some good stuff. Try this salt. Oh, salt seared tuna. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Oh yeah, y'all. Wonderful, wonderful flavor to it. All juices and everything. I'll take and taste that marinade just a little bit. Some great stuff, y'all. I like to say, and try some of this spinach. Oh yeah, Island food spinach is always good. I like to say, polish salt though, y'all. You gotta food your salt, not salt your food. It's some great cooking. Mm -hmm. The second piece of tuna I'm gonna cook tonight, I'm gonna try something a little different. Turn around here. I got the tuna totally raw here. I'm gonna try to make some little slices with a sharp knife. Put that there. Let me make one or two. One this way. There we go. Now I'm going to show you how you can do this like in a party style. Over here the hot rock. Put a little bit more of the oil on there. Put that around just a little bit. There we go. Put this one right. Now I'm going to take one of these little strips of tuna. Lay a strip on there. A couple of strips there. Just let this cook right here before our eyes. I think this would be pretty cool. You know, if you had this hot in the middle of the table or something like that, it would be really neat just to cook, you know, right there in front of everybody. And you could do this if this was uh, beef as well. Let it just sear for a second on each side. Chopsticks. And I'm going to that side. Go flip that side. Let that go for a second. That's cool. See, that's about ready to take off now. We just took a couple seconds on each side. Put something to put it on. Once it's done. Alright. I'm going to try this piece right off the hot rod. Hmm, wow. That's pretty cool. That'd be a fun way, you know, have some people over, have it stay in the middle of the table, and just kind of, kind of cook on it. You know, you could put you some little burner, or set it maybe on a, um, set on a griddle or somewhat, but they'll hold heat for a while. You could actually do this with no heat underneath it. You know, so I'm going to go ahead and put me a couple more pieces on here. I'm going to eat mine this way, right off the rock. I'm going to food my salt as I eat. Like they say it's posh. Y'all gotta food your salt. Thanks.